Well, hey, Dad. Hey, Jonathan. Hey. Christmas is right around the corner, and it's the one time of year where the secular calendar and the Christian calendar come together, and everyone says it's the best time of the year. So, Dad, just tell us what's been on your heart as we reflect on the incarnation. Well, well you both of you know that Christmas is my favorite time of the year, and um, not not weather wise, but season wise. And you know, as far as when you look at the church calendar and you look at the different feasts of Israel, it tells us something about God, right? The different season. Like when you look at the Passion Week and the crucifixion, you begin to reflect on the seriousness of sin, right? What it costs God to redeem us, what it's cost us as a race. But in Christmas, the incarnation, the baby in a manger, it tells us something very different about God. And I think that's why it, even the secular world celebrates Christmas because it's the one time of the year where it's safe for us to approach the almighty. Mm. It's safe. You're not trembling at the, at the baby in the manger. He's got, God has little fingers. (laughs) He's got little toes. You know, he's, you can approach him. And for the first time, you don't have to be afraid and you can reflect upon the God who meets us right where we're at, not only where we're at, but makes himself vulnerable. And that causes you to not trip, not just tremble before God, but it causes you to adore him. It's the season of adoration to adore him. Oh, come. Let us adore him. That's the song, probably the most, that and Silent Night and others. But the point is, is that God can be approached. And that's a big deal because most human beings live in that feeling of shame where they can not dare to believe they could approach the Almighty, but in Christmas they do. And that's why I say, hey, get the religious meanness off of this holiday and let everybody come to the Christ child. Let even foreign wise men and kings come to the Christ child. You know, let everybody come and see there's hope and goodwill towards men. And then I think, you know, it's so fascinating, just the whole incarnation that God could have come in any form and yet he comes in our form as a baby in that place. And then the last thing I'll say is, you know, is it gives us hope. I think about families this Christmas and, you know, these holidays bring forth all the feelings of the dysfunction, the brokenness, the state we're in. And so God doesn't enter into an ideal situation. He enters into a family that already begins with a negative, (laughs) with the stigma of possible birth out of wedlock of Joseph being confronted and already at the very beginning, God's family, he enters it in the nitty gritty of the pain, not in the ideal. And so in that way, God enters a family just like all of our families and gives us great hope that God can restore our families and our homes and meet us there because at the end of it all, Marries with the brothers and sisters of Jesus in the upper room, and they make it. (laughs) And so I guess my prayer this season for all our partners and all those who track with us is, is he safe to approach? We don't have to hide our shame. And he's writing on nitty gritty of our own families. He knows what it's like, and he's there bringing us hope again that he's going to restore our families. He's going to help us. Yeah. Of course, I'm with my two sons. And, you know, it, it. we have our own things we've had to sort through and work through and still are. And yet the, the good news this Christmas, again, is he's right in the nitty gritty and humility and meekness and love to help us. Dad, what are the three words you said? You, I didn't catch them. He's safe. He's fascinating. The Christ child is safe to approach. God's safe to approach. 
God's fascinating that he would even take on the form of a man and come as a child that would cause us to not only tremble before him, but to adore him, to love him. We get to love him at Christmas. We get to adore him at Christmas. We tremble before him at other seasons, but at this one we adore. And then the third one is, you know, there's hope for our families. Yeah. There's hope. He comes right where we're at and brings hope. Why? Because he joined a family, a particular family, with a particular set of problems and dysfunctions and brokenness and intervenes. Yeah. That's so he'll so do good. it for us. Jonathan, what, uh, what comes to mind as you just hear? These are the type of conversations we have as a family in the in Christmas period since we were <laughs> little boys. You know, what, uh, what comes to mind for you, even if it's simple? Hmm. Well, I think that Christmas is both this season of rejoicing and sometimes a lament, depending on where you're at in life. And so I, I'm appreciating, you know, the safe, fascinating and hope because everybody's welcome at the manger. Yes. And Jesus enters a real historical, particular context that is very similar to many of us, you know, low socioeconomic, not a lot of influence with his particular family, but yet God comes man, enters real historical context. And that means that, you know, we can approach the manger even when we feel weak, we feel broken. And when come Christmas time, I'm, I can have confidence mm. at the little feet of Jesus, <laughs> Yeah. Knowing that he yeah. he loves me, and that he has experienced much of what we have experienced, and that is really profound at the deepest yeah. level. That's really good. I'll 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 add one little thing as we kind of close. Um, I think sometimes I go into autopilot during the Christmas season, and I love gifts. I love Amazon wish lists. I love blessing family members sometimes Christmas becomes this crazy period where we're trying to wrap up all this work to get, get ready for the holiday. And then you're open, you can get all of the presents, you know, purchased and, you know, within budget and wrapped so that, and sometimes Christmas can feel chaotic in our kind of modern world. And I think the beauty of little moments, even like in this video, or even in your devotional life is, is we approach him in scripture, we approach him in prayer, we approach him in these conversations and we're reminded that at the core of Christmas is actually peace. That, you yeah. know, what did they announce on earth? Peace, goodwill yeah. towards men. And so I just want to pray over you, if you're watching, that um, this would be a moment where we would draw near to him. Our hearts would be fascinated. We could see that he's with us in the real state of our life and that he in that place would give us peace. So, Lord, I pray. For yes, not so. only our family, for my dad, for yeah. my brother Jonathan, our whole family, but also for those watching and for yeah. their families. I yeah. ask that the same thing that was pronounced at Christ's birth 2,000 years ago would reign in our hearts. The peace of Jesus, the word made yeah. flesh, would reign in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I'm going to miss you guys. I know you're, you're getting, you're, you're down there in Florida for Christmas and I'm up here with Maddie. We'll be with her family, but I uh, love you all so much and hope both you, dad and Chandler and all those watching have an amazing Christmas season. God bless you. Bless you. Love you.